Hey guys, doing? This is Captain Cortez of Cortez Outfitters. Uh, today I'll be tying a Clouser minnow that we use a lot in the Western Long Island Sound for striped bass and bluefish are there around, but since it's bucktail, we mostly use it on uh, striped bass. Um, I like to use uh, bucktail. Here's a white. I throw a little pink in the middle, and to finish it off, chartreuse. You need a chartreuse. The hook I'll be using is a Gamagata Executive Series uh, B10. See, you see that B10S stinger. Uh, very sharp hooks. Uh, very good. Um, I'll be using Flash, Flash Pro Lesson Flash, and uh, Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. Be tying it with mono thread. And we're using extra large dumbbell eyes, which I got right here. Alright, we're going to see how that looks now. Alright guys, so you're going to start by tying up some mono on the shank. Uh, tie it back. I like to put little Sally hands in uh, hard as nails on the shank and then tie back uh, to make sure that the threads are nice and tight on that. You can see this uh, Clouser minnow here is very effective um, on many fish from smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, to striped bass, bluefish. I'm uh, pretty sure there's fish in the south that uh, love Clouser minnows. Um, very effective, very good. Um, so here I create a little tab on, on the shank of the hook by just making a couple extra wraps in one spot so the eye doesn't slide around as I tie on the dumbbell eye. Of course, take as many wraps as you feel comfortable. Make sure that the eye is nice and tight on. Go wacky, go all kind of directions. You want to make sure that it's nice and straight on the shank. Now you want to take uh, some of your bucktail here, the white bucktail, small amount. Again, you you'll realize how much you need, how much you don't want. It all depends on what kind of profile you want. I'm trying to go for a small bait fish here. Um, so I take a little bit. As you notice that I actually wet the tip of the bucktail so I could cut them and manage it easier. Some people might not do that, but that's the way I just like to do it. So you put on the shank of the hook, tie it down. I, I like to use my nails as another tool to position the hair where I want it. And then keep tying it down to make sure it's nice and secure. So as you see throughout the video, I use my nail a lot. This probably the little nail I do have, I use it a lot for uh, tying all kinds of flies. Um, so then now you go in front of the, the eyes and you tie a little bit more of this white bucktail. So here we're actually tying on the, the belly of, of the fish. Um, want to make sure it's, it's nice and even on both sides it's the same thing there you go using the nail always make sure that you spin the fly all the way around so you can see the fly from both sides uh, it's a common mistake for uh, first timers or just beginning fly tying that you one side looks perfect the other side completely off what you were wanting to target now you position you tie it back to around the same spot where you finished off the, the last um, clump of white bucktail there tie it in good everything looks fine now I take a little flash uh, to create the lateral lines on the um, bait fish here. I feel like uh, it's very productive, works for me, makes it imitate like a server side or some kind of anchovy, creates a little flash, a little attractant, and it works well. Goes down right down the middle of the bait fish here. Ties them down, cut off the excess, which I don't throw away, I was just using it for another fly or 
New Jack's dubbing or something. I tie it down as far as down as the last clump of white bucktail. Then I tie it back up, make sure it's nice and secure. Now pink, I'm tying a little pink now in the middle, uh, here in the western Long Island Sound around City Island. Um, fish respond to the pink uh, pretty well. Um, I hear also in Cape Cod and other places, um, stripers actually respond to pink pretty well. So if you got pink, put it on. If you don't, don't worry about it. Chartreuse and white, it's, it's a classic color combination that does fine. You don't need the pink. Um, I definitely have flies that don't even have pink in it. It's all preference. So yeah, I normally if I don't add it in the middle, I add it as a throat. I add it somewhere so the fish could see a little pink in it. Just react on it. So you tie it all the way up to the eye, the pink, and that's about it. Just make sure you want to get right in the middle of that. You see me wet, wet the bucktail. Uh, just to see how it would uh, swim in the water. So right now it looks separated, but once everything comes together and in the water, it takes an another life. So as I add the chartreuse as, as the back, I like to add a little extra uh, bucktail as for back. I like to make the back a little thicker. Um, myself and other fly tires have noticed that it swims better. Even clouds are sometimes swim on their side or as you're bouncing it up and down. Uh, it doesn't only swim right like some streamers and deceivers and all, this, all these kind of flies. Um, if you tie a little more material on top, the fly will swim more upright and not so upside down or topsy-turvy. That might not even have an effect if the fish is going to hit it or not, but that's just like a preference of mine. Now I take some peacock. I like to use like six strands, eight if you got it. Um, I like to make them all around the same size, maybe just off by a little bit. Make sure they're nice and straight. Usually you could, you could bend them with, with your fingers to, to try to make a, a nice shiny back. Um, I, I like using peacock, it offsets some of the colors inside uh, the fly. And if you notice, a lot of bait fish, a lot of their backs actually a real dark color. Uh, it's kind of like their, their camo. So when a fish comes up on it, it looks more realistic. Uh, so you're matching the hatch even better. Alright, you like to divide, try to get it close as you can to the middle. There you go. Again, there's no one way to tie a clouser. Uh, this is the way I do it. I've read books and seen a whole bunch of videos on how other people do it. Is what works for me. Is not so intense, not so crazy going in, into this fly tying uh, of this clouser. Some people they they like to do more. They like to add more crazy glue, more more wraps on the bucktail to secure it more down. I f I like to to use it this way. Uh, it works for me fine. So do a little whip finish here. Then uh, I like to wet to see the taper on the hairs. So when it swims, it will look similar to this. Not exactly, but similar. So now I use a CCG uh, for the head. Uh, this is a thick one. Um, I also have flex, but this head I'm, I'm not don't want it to move at all. I wanted to make sure it locks all the material in there, especially the thread, so it doesn't move around or anything. Make sure it's nice and even. I like to use it as back as far as right behind the eyes. And uh, also take your time when make, making these flies, especially the first time. 
Um, after a while, these just become muscle memory, and you just make them easier and easier and faster. Alright, once you see 360 view of your fly, you think everything looks fine. Um, you go, you cure it. You could also use this time right now if you want to push down a little bit on the top fibers, top uh, bucktail, so it lays down better, more closer to the buck, white bucktail. Once you like it, just hit it up, and you're done. This is here the um, Clouser Minnow. Uh, it's about three to four inches long. Um, works great on striped bass, especially feeding on sand eels or small bait fish. Um, peanut bunkers around, they'll hit this. So works pretty good. Very durable with with that CCG on the head. And uh, hopefully a bluefish doesn't break it apart. So hope you enjoy the video. Thank